Today's video is sponsored by Pickers Grip. Stop dropped picks and pick rotation while playing with Pickers Grip. Made with all natural ingredients in Virginia. Check out their website to order. When you support my sponsor, this also supports my channel and it's very much appreciated. Here on Robert's Guitar Dungeon, we often celebrate the greatest gear that we could possibly have. The greatest amps, the greatest pedals, greatest guitars, among other things. But from time to time, it's also important that we take a moment and pay homage to some of those other categories, such as the worst solid state amps ever. Now, I have taken the time to do extensive research on this topic prior to shooting this video, so I am absolutely confident that all of the information in here is 100% accurate. This is one man's opinion, but it's an accurate opinion. So, before we get started, here are the ground rules. Criteria for this list, it's got to be solid state, and it sucks. Also, if you saw the title of this video and you clicked on it expecting to see a bunch of crate solid state amplifiers on here, you are going to be very, very disappointed. The reason why is because I grew up with those amplifiers. I have a very soft spot for them in my heart. And no, there's no crate solid state amplifiers on this list. Deal with it. Next, some of you may see your favorite beloved amplifier on this list, in which case you might get upset about it. If you do, I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> but I forgive you. Last but not least, there's most certainly going to be at least a small percentage of you that are going that are liable to comment down in the comments section, well, if you're going to trash these amps, you should at least play them so we can hear why you suck. Well, here's the thing. As soon as you are willing to go spend your own money on a pile of amplifiers that you hate, then maybe I'll listen to that crap. In the meantime, don't expect me to. So... Now that we've got the mood set right, without further ado, let's get into it. So here we are in no particular order, the top 10 worst solid state amplifiers ever. Number one, Marshall MG series. I had a real hard time putting these on this list. And the reason why is because I'm a Marshall guy. You know, when I shoot my videos back in my uh, guitar dungeon room, you know, the room with all the guitars and stuff hanging up behind me. There is a brand, there is a shiny Marshall JCM 900, uh, a, one of my all time favorite amplifiers, actually, that's that's always sits in the background right behind me. I love that amp, I love Marshall amplifiers. The MG series are not one of their better efforts. <laughs> I get why they did it, they needed something affordable in the solid in the in the solid state arena, you know, yeah, but. You know, and it made, I suppose it made sense 10 or 15 years ago, but now that they're competing with, you know, the Line 6s and the, you know, the, the, the Spiders and the Vipers and, you know, all those, all these other model, all these other amps that are modeling amps that sound better nowadays, you know, the technology is advanced and really about the same price. There's just nothing, you know, they're just, you know, the, the series as a whole has just fallen behind the times and, Let's face it, they never sounded that good to begin with anyway. <laughs> Number two, Line 6 Spider Series, specifically the Series 2 and Series 3. These are some of the earlier modeling combos, you know, right around the time when modeling amps were really starting to get popular, but, you know, let's face it, the technology hadn't advanced to where it is now, and they still sucked. Spider 2s and Spider 3s, I, you know, the Spider 2 especially, I know Glenn Fricker seems to like them and has gotten some really, really good recordings out of his, but these things suck. They sound horrible, they're a pain in the ass to program, you know, you can never get your stupid settings back to where you wanted them, back to where you had them before. You know, and they all, you know, and, and, I, and I love the way that they advertise, oh, Celestian speaker, you look in the inside of it's a Rocket 50, which cost about 25 bucks. Get out of here. Number three, the custom tuck and roll. This amp's made an appearance on one of these lists before. 
You know, and I know what everybody's going to say. Oh, John Fogarty in CCR. John Fogarty played in CCR. John Fogarty. Uh, look, I love John Fogarty, and I love CCR as much as the next guy. But, you know, he number one, he played the customs live. And, in, and you know, in the studio, he used Fender tube amps. Number two, John Fogarty is not exactly known for his guitar tone. John Fogarty is known to be a fantastic songwriter. That was CCR strength. Number three, you know why they used custom tuck and rolls while they were out on tour? Probably because they were a bunch of doped up hippies and they needed something softer to sleep on in the back of their damn VW van. I'm sorry, custom tuck and roll amps suck. They suck, they sound sterile and boring and, you know, they don't don't do anything. Nowadays, when you find them, you know, if you can, you know, if you can find one that actually works right, because half the time when you plug them in, you know, plug the head into the cabinet, you you know, it shocks the living hell out of you. If you can find one that actually works right, I don't know why you would, but, you know, and I know there's a bunch of diehard, well, you you got to love those amps there from, you know, that were, you know, all came from, Chinu- or what was it, where were they come from? Chinu- you know, Canooter, you know, Canooter, you know, Canooter Valve, Kansas, I think is where they came from. The, the boys from Canooter Valve, Kansas. Wherever the hell that is. Number four, the Behringer V amp. Or the, the V amp or the vamp. I'm not real sure how this thing is pronounced, but <laughs> you want to know what's worse than a, than a Line 6 Spider 2 or a Spider 3? <laughs> a cheap Chinese clone of a Line 6 Spider 2 or a Spider 3. <laughs> because that's what the Behringer V amps are. <laughs> Number five, Ibanez Tone Blaster. <laughs> this is a metal amp if you're really on a budget. I mean, really on a budget. Like, like you could pick up a head and a 412 cabinet of these things for like 300 bucks or less. They're cheap, solid-state amps is what they are. Cheap, solid-state amps. But they do have a pocket in the back that you can keep store the foot switch in. Pretty cool. Seriously, these amps sound terrible. <laughs> Number six, the custom lead series. Yep, that's right. Custom amps are making yet again another appearance on this list. They they had there was like a custom three and a custom four and a five Roman numeral three, four and five, I believe. Uh, depending on which version of the amp that you had. Fortunately, these amps came much later in customs history, and uh, these amps are, uh, I think, were manufactured overseas in China long after the original owners from uh, Canuder Valve, Kansas, uh, had uh, sold the name or went under and sold the brand name to uh, wherever it was. You know, while it's still under the custom brand, fortunately, these are not the same. They did not come from the same era that the great amps did. <laughs> But they're still pretty terrible. I mean, you can buy like a 100 watt 212 combo brand new for like 250 bucks. <laughs> I mean, that's that's cheaper than a store proprietary brand combo amp. Number seven, <laughs> Gorilla Amps. <laughs> it's called a Gorilla Amp, it's like that big. <laughs> These are the amps you, that you bought if you couldn't afford a crate. <laughs> oh, man. But you can still find them all over the place on the used market today. Prices range anywhere from about 20 bucks all the way up to about... You can find a 100-watt combo or something for about 50 bucks if you catch it on the right day. <laughs> Gorilla amps. <laughs> Number eight, the Johnson Millennium Series. This is another attempt at somebody else trying to jump on the Line 6 modeling combo bandwagon thing. You know, and and the truth is, these amps really didn't sound all that bad for being a solid-state modeling amp. The problem is they were made really, really inexpensively, and these amps were not. Notorious for blowing up and breaking down and just 
all of a sudden not working out of nowhere for seemingly no reason whatsoever. And as a result, the value on these things on the used market reflects it. You can pick these up way cheap. So if you're on a budget and you know you're willing to take the risk and you might not be traveling with it too much or if you're anywhere if at all, then maybe go check out a Johnson Millennium amp. But be prepared; the day may come when it just decides that it's going to give you the finger and uh, just and uh, you know blow a speaker for nothing. You know, like when it's turned off. Number nine, Univox U65RN. This is a solid state amp that came out in the late 60s. Just check out a couple of YouTube videos out there what this thing sounds like. If you don't want to take the time to do that, then trust me, it sounds like crap. This is one of the most god awful sounding amps I have ever heard. You know, it sounds like the speaker sounds like it's you're, you're playing through a tin can. But you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a humpback whale giving birth to a school full of blowfish. Probably the best way I can describe it. Number 10, Laney Linebacker. This is another one that I struggled to put on this list because I actually really, really like Laney amps. Even though I did include the AORs on, on another worst amps list some time ago because I actually really do not like the AORs for legitimate reasons. I actually do really like Laney amplifiers as a whole. I have, in fact, an IRT studio in my studio rack here right next to me that I use very often. You hear it on a vast majority of my gear demos right here on this channel. You know, I really like Laney amps. But the linebackers were terrible. <laughs> this is a solid state amp that you, that, you know, another one that sounded like you were playing through it. But, well, if you really want to know what a fax machine being bludgeoned by a dial up modem sounds like, Laney linebacker will give you a pretty good idea. Sorry, Laney. I love you guys, even though you never did get back with me, you know, despite the half a dozen emails I sent you about the rack ears for this IRT studio. But. The Laney linebacker was a miss. So there you have it. There's my list of the top 10 worst solid state amplifiers ever. So please leave your comments down below and let me know what amplifiers I may have left off of this list. I'd leave links to uh, all the amps that I talked about in this video down in the description, but I don't think you want them. So, but various other links that are uh, pertinent to this channel will be down there as well as various different ways that you can support this channel please don't forget to do the like share subscribe thing at the very end thank you all so so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video adios see you later bye